Sairam. Sairam. You asked me to talk about consciousness and anesthesia. Anesthesia is basically to put your mind to sleep or make it unconscious so that it is not conscious of your body. It is only the superficial side of our mind which is put to sleep or inactivated. While mind is a huge complex, subconscious, superconscious and so on. So conscious part of the mind is related to the body and you are conscious of your body and therefore when a surgeon puts a knife on your skin, because you are conscious it hurts you and therefore not to hurt you, drugs are given to make you become unconscious. Just because you are not conscious of your body, it does not mean you are unconscious at every level. So conscious is referring to the physical body. I am conscious of my body because I am awake, but when I am put to sleep under anesthesia or when I go to sleep, deep sleep particularly, I am not even conscious of my body. That doesn't mean my consciousness is not there. So that is the conscious aspect. The, the other aspect which is at the level of the mind cannot be put to sleep entirely because the mind is always there as an interface between the spirit and our body. The mind never dies. The body may die, but the mind forms a subtle part of our manifested consciousness. Manifested consciousness meaning from consciousness came the individual as a physical body which is conscious and a subconscious part of me is the mind which is still active. Nothing, nothing can switch off the mind, not even death. Because when we leave this body, the mind goes with us as a subtle part which is called the astral body. So what we refer to as soul is the spirit or the atma bundled up with the mind and that is why each individual soul displays different characteristics. Spirit is uniform, it is universal, it is not affected by any. And yet the body and mind have come from the consciousness or the spirit which always is and which always will be. And that is why we refer to the spirit is eternal life. As Baba says, you are three persons in one, the one you think you are, which is the physical body. What you others think of you is your mind, which is still active and has the capacity to imagine anything based on past experiences. But what gives the power for the whole thing is the spirit which is consciousness. So we can say each human being is a unique and an inimitable expression of divine will in this infinite sea of consciousness. Right. Now what is the difference between being unconscious under anesthesia, which means only the superficial side of our mind is switched off and therefore you have no body consciousness. Conscience comes at the deeper level which is directly linked to the spirit at the higher mind which gives you the conscience. So the conscience is still in the mind at the highest and the purest level and consciousness is the source like electricity giving life 
and supporting life. So when consciousness leaves the body, which is the purest spirit, conscience also goes with it because conscience cannot stay without the spirit. The mind also goes with the spirit because the mind is not a material thing like the body. So the body goes back to the elements of the earth while each individual together with his own mind will journey onwards carrying a bundle of unfulfilled desires and impressions. So that is the difference between conscious, conscience and consciousness. Conscious is the physical body. Conscience is at the mind at the highest, purest level where it is close to the spirit and therefore we say conscience is God. Now experience. We know many instances where people have heard things and seen things even under deep anesthesia and I have had this experience in my professional career. I'll give you one example. Once I was giving an anesthetic for a lady for a surgical procedure. She was a very spiritual lady. She wanted me to give her the anesthetic and I had to arrange a surgeon. I injected the drug and she became unconscious and the operation went very smooth. I did not make any big deal about the anesthetic. I made it quite short and simple. She woke up in the recovery and wanted to speak with me very excitedly. And then she told me the following story. As soon as I'm quoting her own words, Doctor, as soon as you started injecting the drug into my vein, I felt things getting darker and darker very quickly and finally it was total darkness. Then I saw like early morning a dim light and I found myself seated on my chest wondering what to do next. I couldn't stay there. I was so light and I started floating up, floating up and I went through the operating theatre light, which is solid. I went through that light and finally I hit the ceiling and perched myself in a corner of the ceiling and I watched the whole proceeding. And she described every detail about what was going on in the operating theatre. As far as I am concerned, she was completely unconscious under my anaesthetic which was fairly deep. Now there is a part of her which is the mind with the spirit which has freed itself from the body and is watching the body from outside. Her description was so perfect, she was able to tell who came in and who went, did not know them by name but she described people, a gentleman walked in with a beard, with a mask of course, the beard sticking out of the mask and so on. Now what happened to her? That part of her, which is at the level of the mind, subtle body you call it, or the astral body, her astral body left her physical body during that operation. She described everything in detail, including Sai Baba walking into that operating theatre and standing on the right side of the surgeon over his shoulder and then the right arm was glowing with orange light and operation went very smooth and she was watching all of it. And she told me that she had no pain whatsoever. So which part of her left the body while the body was being operated and she had no pain? At the physical level my drug has knocked out her superficial mind and numb the nerves which carry this pain impulses. But there is a deeper side of the subtle body which was able to free itself from the body 
you have heard people talk about astral travel, that means leaving the body behind and they are traveling all over the space and all over the world. This is happening to many people many times, but we can't remember when we are back in our body. I guess that happens when we are in very, very deep sleep, when you can't be even woken up. Right. So that explains the subtle part, which left the body, watched everything from outside, like a video camera on a cherry picker, videoing a football match from top. And here she is able to see the entire operating theatre and watch the operation and describe everything in detail. So consciousness is not just limited to the physical body where you are conscious of pain or conscious of any kind of stimulus. But at the level of the mind, you remember, you register, it is like a video recorder going on continuously and you can recall that and all that is possible only because of the spirit which is consciousness powering up this particular individual.